dark is necessary. Plop asked, what's next? A great many times during that night. He sat just outside the nest hole, making loud snoring noises. He was not asleep, just hungry. Owls always snore when they're hungry. Oh, Plop, I should be glad when you can hunt for yourself, said Mrs Barnow wearily, when Plop could gulp down his seventh, or was it his eighth, dinner. What's next? asked Plop. <clears throat> Nothing, said his mother. You can't possibly have room for anything else. I have, said Plop. My mouse place is full up, but my grasshopper place isn't. Well, that's just too bad, said Mrs Barnell, stretching and settling herself down to roost. Mr Barnell swooped in, clapping his wings. He dropped something at Plop's feet. Plop swallowed it in one gulp. It was delicious and slippery. That was nice, he said. What was it? A fish, said his mother. I like fish, said Plop. What's next? Bed, said Mr Barnell. He kissed his wife good night or good day, I suppose it was, and settled himself to roost. Plop made a few help, hopeful snoring noises, but it was clear that the feast was over. He wobbled into the nest hole and was soon fast asleep himself. It was well into the afternoon when he woke up. He came out onto the landing branch and looked around. His parents were still drawn up, as still, car still as carvings, but the squirrels from downstairs were chasing each other up and down the trunk, their tails flying behind them. Plop watched them for a bit. One of them scuttled along the branch just below Plop's and then stopped abruptly and began to wash his face. He did not know that Plop was there. After all, owls are supposed to be asleep during the daytime. Plop could not resist. He bent down through the leaves and let out his very loudest, eek! <clears throat> the squirrel jumped into the air like a jack-in-the-box, his ears a quiver and his eyes like marbles. He flashed down the trunk and vanished into his hole. Plop jumped up and down with delight, but of course he had done it again. He had woken his mother. Plop! Yes, mummy. Go and find out some more about the dark, please, dear. Now, said Plop. Now, said his mother. Go and ask that little girl what she thinks about it. What little girl? That little girl sitting down there, the one with the ponytail. Little girls don't have, po have tails. This one does. Go on now or you'll miss her. So Plop shut his eyes, took a deep breath and fell off his branch. His landing was a little better than usual. He bounced three times and rolled gently towards the little girl's feet. Oh, a woolly ball, cried the little girl. Actually, I'm a bar now, said the woolly ball. An owl? Are you sure? She said, putting out a grubby finger and prodding Plop's round fluffy tummy. Quite sure, said Plop, backing away and drawing himself up tall. Well, there's no need to be huffy, said the little girl. You bounced. You must expect to be mistaken for a ball if you will ever go bouncing about the place. I've never met an owl before. Do you say to it to woo? No, said Plop. That's tawny owls. Oh, well, you can't be a proper owl then, said the little girl. Proper owls say to it to woo. I am a proper owl, said Plop, getting very cross. I'm a barn owl, and barn owls go eek like that. Oh, don't do that, said the little girl, putting her hand over her ears. <clears throat> well, you shouldn't have made me cross, said Plop. Anyway, you can't be a proper little girl. What did you say, said the little girl, taking her hands off her ears? I said you're not a proper girl. Girls don't have tails. Squirrels have tails. Rabbits and mice have tails. Mice, this is a ponytail, said the little girl. It's the longest one in the class, she added proudly. But why do you want to look like a pony, asked Plop. Because, oh, because it's the fashion, said the little girl. Don't you know anything? Not much, agreed Plop. Mummy says that's why I'm afraid of the dark, because I don't know anything about it. Do you like the dark? The little girl looked at Plop in surprise. <clears throat> well, of course I do, she said. There has to be dark. Dark is necessary. Dark is necessary. Is what? Necessary. We need it. We can't do without it. I can do without it, said Plop. I could do without it very nicely. Father Christmas wouldn't come, said the little girl. You'll have an empty stocking on Christmas Day. I don't wear stockings, said Plop. And who is Father Christmas? Well, Father Christmas is a fat, jolly old man with a white beard and he wears a red suit with a matching hat and black boots. Is that the fashion? asked Plop. No, said the little girl. It's just what he always wears in pictures of him. 
although I don't know how anybody knows because nobody has ever seen him. What? said Plop. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Father Christmas only comes in the dark. He comes in the middle of the night, riding through the sky on a sledge pulled by a reindeer. Deer? asked Plop. In the sky? Magic deer, said the little girl. Everything about Father Christmas is magic, otherwise he couldn't possibly get round to all the children in the world in one night or have enough toys for them all in his sack. You didn't tell me about his sack. He has a sack full of toys and he puts them in the children's stockings. In their stockings, said Plop, with their feet in them. There can't be much room. No, silly, we hang empty stockings at the end of our beds for him to fill. I usually borrow one of Mummy's, but last year I hung up my tights. And did he fill them? breathed Plop. No, only one leg, but he did put a sugar mouse in the other. I'd rather have a real mouse, said Plop. So would I really, said the little girl. I wanted a white mouse, but Mummy says that if a mouse comes into the house, she will leave it, and I suppose Father Christmas doesn't want me to be an orphan. Plop was thinking, I don't think owls have Father Christmas, not barn owls anyway. I haven't got a stocking to hang up. Oh, what a shame, said the little girl. Everybody should have Father Christmas. I'm, it's so exciting waking up in the, mor in the morning and feeling all the bumps in your stocking and trying to guess what it is. Oh, stop it, wailed Plop. I wish you would come to me. Shut your eyes, the little girl said. Go on, shut them and you may get a surprise. Plop shut his eyes tight and waited. The little girl quickly pulled off her wellington and took off a sock. She was wearing two pairs because the boots were a bit big for her. Open your eyes, she said to Plop, holding up the sock while she stood on one leg and wriggled her foot back into her wellington. Plop opened his eyes and then he then shut them again because he didn't believe what he saw. Don't you want it, said the little girl. I know it's a bit holy, <clears throat> but I don't expect Father Christmas will mind. Oh, thank you, said Plop, taking it with his beak and then holding it in his foot. Thank you very much. I'll go and hang it up at once. Not yet, laughed the little girl. You have to wait until Christmas Eve. Well, I must go now. It must be nearly tea time. Goodbye. I do hope Father Christmas will come to you. Goodbye, said Plop, bobbing his funny little bow. You're very kind. You are a proper girl and you have a very nice eek. Oh, sorry. And you have a very nice eek, said the little girl. I'm going to practice it to make my brothers jump. Eek! She ran off and Plop could hear her eeking right across the field. Plop picked up the sock in his beak and flew up to the landing branch. Well, said his mother, so little girl says, he began with a fat mouth full of sock. He put it down and tried again. The little girl says dark is necessary because of Father Christmas coming, he said. What do you think, Plop? I still do not like it at all, but I'm going to hang the sock up on Christmas Eve. And Plop took his sock and put it away very carefully in a corner of the nest hole ready for Christmas.